I told myself I wasn't going to do it. And welcome back to Nets Republic. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button and all that shenanigans. I told myself I wasn't going to do it. I, this is another game where I had to give it 24 hours because I felt like the first... I felt like if I would have made the video last night, I would have said something I would have regretted. So I, I took a second to calm down and come to my senses a little bit. I said I wasn't going to do this again, but I feel like I'm doing it again, and here we are. You've already seen the title of the video. This man, Jacques Vaughn, had us fooled. He had us, he had us bamboozled. He had us speckled orfed. He had us led astray. He had any other buzzword you want to throw out there. This man had us fooled. He had the wool over our eyes, you feel me? We had the blinders on, you feel me? We were hitting the the, 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 the good old Abel test fade. We were blinded by the lights. And I'm telling you, I'm here to pull back the curtains because one thing Sever the Ball is going to do is get to the bottom of it. When the world was trying to figure out what was going on between Lil Wayne and Birdman, the homie Sever the Bond came through with investigative d d detective see to tell you what happened when we were trying to figure out what did J.R. Smith no not J.R. Smith what did Joe Kim Noah possibly say to Jeff Hornacek to warrant being banished several the bond went to work when we were trying to figure out when was Bobby Schmerner's hat ever going to come down good old Seven the bond was hot on the case and hot on the trails you feel me when we were trying to figure out the depths that Kyrie would go to sabotage the team, be it be it with 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 with, with quirky oddball Instagram lives about conspiracy theories and such, or his stances on the vaccine, good old Sever the Bond was on the case. When we were trying to figure out is 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 Harden just washed or is he trying to get out? What's really going on? Good old Sever the Bond was on the case. I've been there every step of the way. Every great internet conspiracy. Sever the Bond has been there for it. And I've always been there for it. But this is the one. This is the one y'all don't want to hear. This is the one y'all don't want to go to. You don't want to go there. You don't want to hit the Chris Brown don't judge me. You don't want to go there. And I understand it. And someone with the track record of me, people say Trey Young is a coach killer. No, I am a glorified coach killer. I have ran so many coaches out of New York. My 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 hit list is is insane. The names I've scratched off. My most recent work being Steve Nash. I'm, 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 I'm very proud of that slander campaign. And normally, I'm one of the people who are on the train to begin with. And this is how it starts. So for people who are new to, new to the channel and who are new to good old Sever the Bond, this might be new to you. But what happens is I pick something up and I say I'm concerned about it. Y'all tell me I'm insane. And I say, okay, I'll leave it alone. But then the obvious, but then the points get a little bit more obvious. And all of a sudden, they're, 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 there's chatter. There's chatter amongst individuals. Now, obviously, regardless where we are in the timeline, no one ever comes back in retrospect and says, and, and says sever the bond, you're right. Never happens. Never. When I said Chris S. Porzingis was, was a bum and he would never equate to anything, again, I don't get the my bad you were right, Severs. Like, it's cool, it's fine. Remember, there was a time period where they were trying to tell us Franny Lakina was going to be Jason Kidd. Again, I, I, I never, ever get the I'm sorry, Severs. And that's perfectly fine. It ill what it ill. It's a thankless job what I do to entertain you people. But let me tell you something. This is one of those instances where I'm going to say something. You're going to say I'm crazy. But in a year, we're all going to be saying the same thing. So what is the latest installment of that? What is the latest installment of that? It's Jacques Vaughn. This man Jacques Vaughn got to go. I'm sorry. And I understand maybe that's a little brash. Maybe it's a little too soon. But I don't waited long enough. I told y'all after the trade, I would sit there quietly before I said a word before the All-Star break. I waited. I gave it a good month after the All-Star break. We're finna be in April, okay? 
I gave it plenty of time. So y'all, y'all, y'all can't act like young seven man is just is just trigger happy with the fire the coach button, okay? I gave it time. But this is long enough. <coughs> oh god. I could not scream like I used to back in the day. I think I'm getting older, but that's not here there. Y'all. Did you see the end of the game? I, I, I've seen the end of the game twice because I just wanted to make sure that I saw what I saw. Now, listen. When you looked upon the game, and y'all are watching on Yes, so you don't get to see the certain experiences that I get to see. When the footage cut out and there was like no Yes Network footage or whatever, if you're watching on League Pass, you just get like the arena feed. So the stuff you see from the cameras and up on the Jumbotron is what they were showing on League Pass. So I had a very unbiased look at the team for about a quarter and a half where there was no comment. I couldn't even see the score. It was like being at the game, but you can't look up and see the score. So I didn't even know what the score was. I didn't know what the time was. I forgot what quarter we were in. So I had a very unbiased look at the team. And what I saw was the starting lineup go out there and clank shots over and over and over and over and over. I wasn't sure if I was watching Julius Randle in the three-point competition or watching my favorite team try to attempt to score. It was beyond any realm of, of tragedy I had ever seen in my life. It was giving me Game 7 Rockets type stuff. I had never seen that many clanks. And that basically continued until the third quarter where Mr. Mikel Bridges woke up out of the slumber and decided, oh, it's time to contribute and actually be a useful engine, peep peep. So this... <laughs> one of comedy is don't laugh at your own jokes but that one was funny and I don't care I don't care if you didn't think it was funny that was hilarious the little useful engine Thomas the Tate Pete Pete that is so fun Sever that was a good one bro that, that I gave myself a pat on the back that was a good one okay what was I saying Jesus Christ that was hilarious anyway when he decided to wake up and be a useful engine Pete Pete this man <laughs> this man Starts going off and starts hitting shots. Again, I don't know where that defense is. Y'all calling him mini Kawhi. I don't know where the defense was, but this man decided to hit shots. But he was basically the only one who was contributing. And really the only one who had an overall good game the entire game outside of Seth Curry was really, if we're keeping it all the way of being, it was Claxton. But we've talked about the greatness of Claxton enough. I'm just happy that other people on the team realize that if you're not able to get your shots off, that it's it's a, probably a good idea to get Claxton involved. He can handle it both defensively and offensively. This man is a god. And we don't talk about it enough. The fact that he holds his own against the best premier uh, front, 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 front court individuals the league has to offer. Claxton is going to hold it down every single time. It's not a sometimey event. It is very rare where Claxton is just getting slaughtered out there. It's very, very rare. And it's always against the individuals. It's always against the individuals who people say the Nets need to watch out for because we don't have a center. It's, it's, it's always the Joel Embiid's. It's always the band out of bios. You feel me? It's always these big name players that people say we need to be afraid of because all we have is Claxton, but Claxton shuts them down. Now for Jokic, I mean he still had a triple double, but I mean at least it wasn't it wasn't like one of the crazy Westbrookian ones where it's like man has like 50 points or something like that. Shut that man down. So outside of Claxton and Seth Curry, who didn't get enough minutes, if you ask me, with without consistency, without consistently he plays, didn't really get enough minutes, but that's not here there. So Jacques Vaughn realizes, okay, I'm running Mikel into the ground, and what we're doing is not working. So in the, I, I, I'd say eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, this man pulls the plug and puts Dayron Sharp in. And we all know when Jacques Vaughn puts Dayron Sharp in, that's him waving the white flag. Which, didn't we sign like a seven foot four center that's just wasting away on the bench that we haven't tried yet? But again, again, we don't have enough time to go over everything Jean Vaughn is bad at. We'll just stick to the main narratives. So this man subs in um, 
I don't forgot man's name, subs in Dayron Sharp and a collection of other individuals. So you're looking at a lineup of Seth Curry at point, Cam Thomas, which thank God we were not playing Cam Thomas at center, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Cam Thomas at point guard again, because on what planet is he a point guard? I mean, he maybe size wise, but we all know he's a shooting guard. And yes, the the whole guard thing weaves in and out, but I don't think, oh, pass first, uh, uh, run the offense maestro Cam Thomas. I think, oh, 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 that's a bucket. That's our little mini young Kobe. Like, you feel me? But but that's not here or there. So thank God he he wasn't playing point tonight. Th tonight. But again, we don't have enough time to talk about everything Sean Vaughn does bad. That's not here or there. So you had Seth Curry. You had Cam Thomas. You had Cam Johnson who, again, woke up at the end of the game to decide to contribute for about a quarter, but that's not here or there. So you got Seth Curry, Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, you got Royce O'Neal, and you've got Dayron Sharp. That little click, you feel me? That, 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 that little squad, if you will, managed to get the game from being down 20 to being down like 7 or 8, Right? But Jacques Vaughn saw that it was working and then left them dudes in. So now they're exhausted. We don't have any re relief whatsoever. Then the starters for the Nuggets come in and start laying the Dwayne The Rock smackdown on us. Then when it's out of reach, you see Watanabe trickles in and stuff like that. But what, what, what I'm saying is... We know that the team that we had prior to the trades had the cohesion and chemistry to be defensive juggernauts. There was at one point this season where the Nets were one of the best defensive teams in the league. And it was when you had lineups that consisted of Royce O'Neal, the occasional uh, Dayron Sharp, which this is not Sever the Bond giving praise to Dayron Sharp. I want to make that clear. But he was a part. He, he, he was a part of that team. Seth Curry, which again, I'm not giving Seth Curry any credit for defensive abilities, but having a pulse and knowing how to play with other individuals. Cam Thomas, which we know he should be out there at all times. The only real wild card you have there is is, is is Cam Johnson, but I mean, I guess if you're just asking him to, 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 to play defense, then, you know, sure. But what I'm trying to say is we all know these individuals who are glorified bench players now that barely get the minutes they deserve who were starters before the trade to bring these new shiny toys in. We know that works. The world knows that works. It's Jacques Vaughn who can't get it through his head to understand. And I'm not saying throw all the starters out. I think Spencer Dinwiddie's doing a good job. Do we, do, do, do we keep him? I don't know. But I think Spencer Dinwiddie's doing a good job. I think Mikel Bridges, as much as I hate on him, I think give it a year or two, he's going to have that transformation where it's like, oh, he done made, quote unquote, that step in that leap. It's going to happen at some point. So I, I, I guess it's cool he's on our team when it happens, right? Claxton, we already know what it is with Claxton. But Finney Smith, Cam Johnson... I still can't tell you what they do. I haven't, I, 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 I just haven't the slightest. And think about this. If we subtract Cam Johnson and we subtract Finney Smith, that's minutes for Royce O'Neal. That's minutes for Joe Harris. That's minutes for Seth Curry. That's minutes for uh, uh, Cam Thomas. That's minutes for Watanabe. Jesus Christ on ice. I don't understand. How Sumner's not getting minutes anymore. Did he not prove on multiple occasions that he's capable of holding it down? You, you, you're talking about proven talent in a system that Jacques was running that he just has on the island of misfit toys. And the few times that he actually gives them dudes, you know, run in minutes... That's when we start to like eclipse leads, you feel me? And we start to make it a game again. And it's like Jacques Vaughn remembers in the moment, oh yeah, Royce O'Neal's really friggin' good. Completely forgot about him. Oh yeah, Seth Curry's a bucket. 
Completely forgot about that, didn't you? Oh my God, Cam Thomas can score. Who would have thought? Like you feel, it's, it's just so frustrating to watch. And as I've said about three times in this video, we don't have enough time to talk about all the things this man does questionably, but this is just one of the more recent examples. Jacques Fon is a fraud. Julius Randle level fraud. You know, it's, 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 it's real easy to coach a group of guys to buy in defensively when you got Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant out there. It's real easy to get dudes to buy in when your job is just support the gods. Pretty easy stuff. But oh man, oh man, is Jacques getting exposed when the players are not having an out-of-body experience as far as their uh, offensive or, or, or defensive output on their own, them dudes, well, Jacques, is getting exposed. Now, he's not Steve Nash level where the man's not drawing plays, but God, some of the philosophies are just so... I mean, it just does not make sense. If you're running a, and I'm not the most X's and O's guy, we all know that. But bro, even I can see the stuff is, is it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's just not right. You're running pick and rolls with Claxton, only for Claxton to hold the ball, turn around, and just fling it to the nearest three-point shooter. We all know Claxton can put the ball on the court and get to the rim. And if it's Claxton with four other alleged shooters, then Claxton's got a wide open lane to the rim. We know that Jokic don't play no friggin' defense. I'm pretty sure Claxton can take it to the hoop and get whatever he wants. But Jacques is so like, like, like laser focused on this let's shoot a million threes shenanigans. And dog, everyone knows we're doing it too. Like everyone knows we're doing it. You want to wonder why we can't get a, 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 a offensive rebounds. It's because we're shooting threes. And everyone's along the three-point arc except for Claxton. So much so that you got Claxton saying in interviews, well, it's got to be more than just two people getting rebounds out there because even Claxton knows this joint ain't working. That man might have a nice way with words, but my G, you should be a rapper then. Like, you feel me? If Jacques Vaughn is such a wordsmith, he should retire and be a rapper. We need a coach. I don't care what Hallmark card lesson he, he, he wants to put the metaphorical bow on after three games in a row that we lose, three completely winnable games in a row. I don't care what he says at the end of a press conference. Buddy, do your job. You want to step up the rebounds, put the seven foot three kid in. I, I I I see through it, y'all. I, I, I see through it. You can't fool me. And I'll tell you something. We are lucky the Heat are trash. We are lucky the Hawks are underachieving again. Because if any other team was in earshot of us, we would be... Oh my God, we'd be in the basement. We'd be in play-in city. And if we're not careful, we're going to mess around and be there anyway. Because I'm telling you something. The Bulls are starting to get it together. You, you can feel me? Miami quietly is starting to get their stuff together. If the Hawks are beating the Warriors, I'm, 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 I'm telling you. And I don't care if it was a road game. But I'm telling you. We better be careful or we're going to mess around and be in the play-in. And I don't know what you think is going to happen in a game where we only need to lose one game to be eliminated. You think the collection of dudes we have right now have the cohesion, chemistry, and leadership to make it out of a win-or-go-home situation? I don't think so. 
We'll get lucky if we meet someone in a series and maybe they just don't take us seriously. And then like in game three, they gel together enough to make some type of a push. But you are talking about the playing? We need to avoid that like the plague. And this is coming from someone who three years running said seating don't matter. But that's the type of situation we're in. And we cannot allow ourselves to lose the type of games we're losing. And casuals will sit there and say, Sever, it's the Nuggets. We just beat them last week in Denver. So it's a winnable game. I just... I'm telling you, I see through it. That's all I'm going to say. I see right through I see right through it. Who do we play next? Uh, the next person we play, please don't be the Cavs. 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 Don't be the Cavs. Don't be the Cavs. Don't. God, it's the Cavs. Oh. <sighs> Okay, 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 okay. Um, maybe, maybe this is when the team turns a leaf again. Right, right, hey, I'm trying, okay? We're going to see the homie Karis again. We're going to see the homie Jared Allen again. And... Um, my personal stance is I've been just enjoying the Claxton show. So seeing him go up against Jared Allen is going to be fun to watch. The result of the game, I don't want to, I don't want to invest too much in. We just have to hope that they understand how important of a victory this is. Because if we are not careful, we are going to be a 500 team. If we are not careful, we are getting so further and further away from the teams above us, it's starting to get a little bit scary. And I don't think that a lot of the Nets fandom understands what type of situation we're in. Um, the, I, I was told that the plan was to remain competitive. Now, if your definition of competitive is lose close games, then my friend, we were promised two completely different things. I was promised that we were going to get our stuff together and we were going to remain on a upward trajectory. But what it seems like is it seems to me like Kyrie and Kevin Durant got us to a certain place and now we can't seem to maintain that certain thing, even though we have individuals who are supposed to be replacements for those individuals, but I'm not really seeing where the production is coming from. But that's fine. That's fine. We will ride this roller coaster ride all the way to the play in, and we'll just see what happens, I guess. I guess. Sure. I guess. Let me know your thoughts on last night's game down below. I'll see y'all tomorrow to talk about whatever they did. Jacques, you ain't slick. And I'm on you. I'm on you. Ask your buddy Steve. I'm on you. My guy, the bubble was three years ago. And we ain't giving you the Doc Rivers treatment where you did something amazing a decade ago and we just keep patting you on the back like, oh, 2008, though. <laughs> oh, 2008, though. <laughs> no! You got swept by the Raptors in a bubble. I forget.